she was yesterday. Absolutely. Okay, he said he's going to set the camera. Oh, he, 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 he really did. Ready? Ready? Okay. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنختدي لولا أن هدانا الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه ومن اتبع إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وخل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي First of all we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for this for this way of life for this Islam, had it not been for Allah's guidance, you and I will never have been in any position to guide ourselves into this. And so therefore, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nourisher, the sustainer, the evolver, the molder, the shaper of all the worlds. And may peace and blessings of Allah be upon the last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household and companions and all those who follow him until the end of time. My dear friends of Islam, thank you so very much for allowing me to be part and parcel of your situation. I enjoy this city very well. I mean, coming from New York, I could find some solace here a little bit, <laughs> you know. So um, thank you very much. And um, inshallah, the topic I have in mind today, um, I'll try to um, do as much as I can to put so many topics around. But the basic concept of my uh, topic today, I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the natural successor to Jesus Christ the natural successor to Jesus Christ. That is our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is what is so very important in the world that we live in today, especially um, if you look at Islam today, uh, the most misunderstood religion, you know, the most, you know, misinformational religion. Even though Islam is the fastest growing religion, yet, you begin to find fault as so many things in the world today. You look at YouTube on social media, what they say about Islam, you'll be surprised. But yet, Islam is the fastest growing religion. Why so? Why so? It is the most misunderstood, misinformed, misrepresented, but at the same time, it is the most advancing religion in the world. It is so not just because of me and you, because we don't do anything. Allah have promised the At the end, Allah said, He is Allah who sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth. And Allah said, This religion will supersede any other religion. Even if the unbelievers like it or not, even the mushrik like it or not, Allah said, I am the ultimate witness to see to it that my religion will prevail over all religion. And there is every indication clearly that Islam is still the fastest growing religion in the world. So what we have to do is to push it up a little bit. The Yahud were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lead mankind, but they failed. And they failed so bad. The Nasara, they got the chance to be the vehicle of righteousness. They deviated entirely from the parts. Then Allah in his wisdom, he said, Buntu hayru ummat nas. You, me, the Muslims, hayru umma uhurijal nas. You are the best of nation, evolve. The best of nation, hayru umma, taken from mankind. Why are you the best of ummah? You're not going to be the best of Ummah without any condition. Ta'amuruna bil ma'aruf. adil munkar. You enjoy goodness and you forbid that which is not good. These are the conditions. So if you don't enjoy goodness and forbid that which is not good, then you are not the Hayru Ummah. That Hayru Ummah is there, you know, as a deterrent. It serves as a criterion. You have to do that which Allah has laid down for you to qualify to be the Hayru Ummah. I'm not saying just go around and start talking about Islam out in the street. Your life, the way you exhibit your life, it is a reflection that people will see clearly. The way you speak, the way you talk, the way you interact, the kindness, the goodness that you exhibit, 
that in itself is da'awa. The Sahaba, they understood the message. The Sahaba. When Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحَمَةً لِلْعَالِمِينَ We have not sent thee, O Muhammad, but as a mercy for the whole of mankind. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَزِيرًا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْسَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْسَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah said, we send thee not, O Muhammad, but as a warner and a giver of glad tidings. And Allah said, most of mankind do not know this religion. 1144 years ago, these verses came down. Still, وَلَكِنَّ أَكْسَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ most of mankind do not know this religion. I just came, I came from, I went to Brazil some years ago. And we went to um, uh, the, 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 the Amazon rainforest. The biggest, biggest rainforest I've ever seen in my life. So we did that rainforest. We took a boat. It took us like three, four, five days to get into the interior to present Islam to those who don't have Islam. So when we went, we saw people that have no clothes on. They don't have no clothes. Stuck naked. They don't know anything about Islam. They've never heard it. They're human beings, just like you and I. We went with clothes. We give them clothes. They put it on. They took it out and threw it away. They look at me. I have clothes. They laugh at me. They're laughing among themselves. Look at this guy. They got clothes on. They came and touched our clothes. They were like, what? They got clothes on? Like that. They are cut out of the civilization. That's why Allah said, Siru fil ard. Travel on earth. Hanzuru kaifa kana akibat al ladina min kabluk. Travel on earth. In the ardi wasi. And Allah said, My earth is spacious, it's expand. Go. So the Sahaba, Imam Ghazali, in his Ikhya Ulumuddin, he did the abridged version. Imam Ghazali said, Most of the Sahaba did not die in Arabian Peninsula. Because they understood the message. They travel all over the world and they disseminate Islam. Most of them died outside Arabian Peninsula because they understood the message. So I'm going to ask a question. I'm looking at this community of us right now, what I'm seeing. I see United Nations here right now. I see people from the Arabian Peninsula. I see some from Indian Peninsula. I see some from Africa. We are like a United Nation. But the question is, why are we in America? Why? Why are we in America? I just came back from Africa a couple of months ago. And I went to an embassy of, uh, you know, a government, I mean, a Nigerian embassy. I went to the American embassy to do some, you know, documents. So when I went there, I saw a lot of people making a long line, a long line. They're looking to get a visa to come to America. And the, the line is so long that you, you can't even see the beginning and the end. So they told me they started forming the line on Friday. On Friday night, they started forming the line in American embassy to get a visa. That means they have to come and sleep there Saturday, Sunday, Monday. The closer you are, maybe you get the visa. So I'm thinking, if these guys in the line, if they have assurance that they're going to get a visa, wallahi, they will sell their houses to get the visa. If they know they will get the visa, they will sell everything to get that visa to come to America, the land of honey and milk. But you see, Allah make it easy for me to be here, for you to be here. Is it your smartness? No, it is the will of Allah. That's Allah's will make you to become here. So if I ask you, why are you here? You might say, well, I'm here to make my life better, to have some education, to protect myself from political insurgents back in my country. We have so many reasons. The reason, the main ultimate reason why you and I are here in America is to present Islam. We are here to do something. Look for wealth, fine, it's good. It's good to look for wealth. Look, look for the wealth. At the same time, think about tomorrow could be the end of time. So think about yourself Leaving the earth any time from now, at the same time, we need to, you know, work and make some money. Because without wealth, we can't propagate this deen. This religion has reached a certain level that we need wealth to propagate it. And so, therefore, what I'm trying to say is that we are here for something. In Surah uh, Maryam, Allah was angry about a situation. 
so angry, very so angry. But we read that beautifully with a melodious voice, and we don't see the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah said, And they say that Allah وَقَالَ تَحَزَ الرَّحَمَانُ وَلَدَا لَكَ جِئِتُمْ شَيْءٌ إِدَّا شَيْءٌ إِدَّا تَكَادُوا السَّمَاوَاتِ اِتَفَتَّرِنَ مِنْهُ وَتَشَقُوا الْأَرْضَ وَتَخِيرُوا الْجِبَالَ حَدَّا عَنْدَ أَوْ لِلْرَّحَمَانُ وَلَدَا وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِلْرَّحَمَانِ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ وَلَدَا إِنْ كُلُّ مَنْ فِي السَّبَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا آتِ الرَّحَمَانَ أَبْدَا And they say, the most merciful God have begot a son. This is one of the most horrible things they can say about Allah. If the heaven have feelings like you and I, it will fall down in total ruins for saying that Allah have a son. And if the mountain have feelings like you and I, it will spew forth for saying that Allah have begot a son. And if the earth have feelings like you and I, it will gush away under our Rahman. It is not consistent with Allah's majesty to beget a son. Whatsoever in the heaven and earth must come to Allah as a servant. And that is the bone of contention. Most of the people here in America, most of them are Christians. So how are you going to interact with them? How? They might ask you a question. Well, how would you going to say? You remember there was a time in Medina. In Medina, when the Messiah was in Medina, some Arab Christians, these were Arabs, but they were Christians. They live in a town called Najiran. They heard that there is a man in Medina claiming to be a recipient of divine revelation. So they came to Medina to cross-examine the messenger of Islam, ask him a few questions, see if he's indeed a messenger of Allah. They stay in Masjid in Nabawi for like a week. During the interaction between them and the messenger of Islam, one of them said to Muhammad, Lan jannah illa man kana hudan aw nasara. You, Muhammad, you will never enter Jannah, you and the Sahaba, no Jannah for you, unless you become a Jew or a Christian. So Muhammad was waiting. So he waited and the revelation came. This is their vain, wishful thinking. This is their hallucination. This is what they are saying. Then Allah said, Muhammad, tell them, Kul burhanakum in kuntum salikin. Bring your proof which destined you to heaven and destined the Muslims to hell. You say you're going to heaven, they're going to hell. Khatu burhanakum. Bring your proof. Why would Allah ask us to ask them for the burhan? Because Allah has presupposed that any time they bring the burhan, we will be in position to analyze the burhan. And alhamdulillah, the burhan have been analyzed. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Ask, ask them for the burhan. They brought it. What are you going to do with it? Believe in it? No. Check it out. So in checking it out, we have so much information. And we said, after Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, the next in line, the messenger that came was so Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So the topic, like I said, Muhammad, the natural successor to Jesus Christ. The natural successor. Now, what is succession? Succession is for someone to lead, for the next person to take the position. He succeeds you. We have four types of succession. We have Succession by election. You go to the poll and you cast your votes to select the new leader. That is succession by election. We have succession by selection. The leader of the community will select anyone he feels to occupy that I mean position. That is selection, uh, succession by selection. Then we have succession by Heritage, the king passed away. The next person in line succeed him. Succession by heritage. Then we have succession by appointment. We have different type of succession. So in which way did, G did Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam became the natural successor to Jesus Christ? Look, the way Allah elects or selects his leaders, it is not the way we think he should be. Take Moses, for example. He's a prophet that is not eloquently. He, had, he was a starer. But why would Allah choose someone who can express himself eloquently? Why? 
If you have a business, I don't think you select someone that is not eloquent in his speech. I don't think you would do so. I wouldn't do so. I need a PhD, someone that is qualified in rhetorics to sell my company. So why would Allah choose him? That means Allah's yardstick or standard for election or selection is not our standard. Isa Bunu Maryam, a man who cannot show, this is my dad, a man without a father, how would you call him? Don't tell me, I know. But why would Allah select such a man subject to ridicule? Which the Jewish were the first to do that ridicule. ridicule. They were ridiculing in Surah Al-Ma'idah, I'm, uh, I'm sure. Look at the word buhtanan. It tells you buhtan, something terrible. Allah Maryam buhtan al-azim. Horrible. Because of their unbelief, they say to Mary a horrible thing. That horrible thing, the Quran didn't mention. So we know. If you read Mishnah, Talmud, Haggadash, and Jimera, these are the commentary books of the Yahud. In those books, especially in Mishnah and Talmud, they call Jesus Christ Ben Pendera. Some say Ben Pendera. But in the Talmud, they call him Ben Pandera, the son of Pandera. Who is Pandera? Pandera was the leader of the Roman soldiers. They say Mary went and had, subhanAllah, with him, and they beget Jesus. This, this one, they call him this one, the son of Pandera. They call him, Wabikufuri him. Horrible word to Mary. But we know that is not the case. But that's what they say. Why would Allah logically, from the point of view of you and me, Allah selected the messenger Muhammad وسلم, as a messenger for the whole of mankind? A man who is unlettered, never gone to school. His mother died at the age of when he was you know, very young. He, he didn't see his dad. His dad died before he was born. So why would Allah choose someone like this when we have eloquent people maybe among the ranks of the people in Mecca? Allah's standard is not my standard. It is not your standard. The way Allah chooses a messenger, that is how it is and that is how it fits. So we read in Surah to Saf, Quran 61, verse 6. Allah reported what Isa ibn Maryam said to Bani Israel. Allah is telling us in the Quran. What is called Isa ibn Maryam? Ya Bani Israel, inni Rasulullah ilaykum. The Quran is telling us that Jesus said to the Israelites, Most certainly, O Israel, I am a messenger of God sent unto you. That's what the Quran said. But the point is, is it true or false? Is the Quran right or wrong? Is it true or false? We have to find out in their books. So we read in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 5. Matthew said, Jesus said to the disciples, These twelve, Jesus sent them to the mission of healing and preaching. And he said unto them, These twelve, do not go into any way of the Gentiles. Do not go. Nor any city of the Samaritans, do not go. But go ye rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. For I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That means he came for the Israelites. He was telling the Sahaba, don't go to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? You and me. The Jewish said, you and me are a Gentile. The Gentile is a non-Jew. The Jew, everybody else is Gentile. But the word Gentile is a horrible word. It's not a good word at all, if you know what it means. In the Hebrew language, it's goy. Goy or goyim. Either they use goy or goyim, which means a Gentile. Goy in the Hebrew language, it means unclean. Very unclean. Gala, un unclean. Goy. It's Gentile. In Greece, translated to Latin, it became Gentile in English. That means but we, we use that loosely. Okay, the Gentile. No, the Gentile means unclean. It also means someone that God created. But God doesn't really love you so much because he loved the Jew more. 
So it is the Jew and the Gentile. So Jesus said, do not go into any way of the Gentiles, my disciple. Don't even go to um, the Samaritans. Who are the Samaritans? Half Jew, half something else. Half Jew, half. Jesus said, don't even go to them. Then he said, but go ye rather unto the lost tribe of the house of Israel, because I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That means the Quran confirmed, in me, Rasulullah ilaykum. He came specifically for the Yahud. And the proof is big in the gospel because Jesus selected 12 disciples with his own hand. Each one of them represent the 12th tribe of Judah. The disciples were men, the 12 of them, to represent the 12 children of Judah. So in the book of Matthew 28, Jesus said, on the day of judgment, these 12 will sit on a throne judging the tribes of Israel. Not you, because you are a Gentile. He didn't come for you. He's only judging the tribe of Israel. In the same verse, John chapter 15, uh, 21 verse 15, an Arab woman. The other Bible, the Bible written in 1957 said she's a Palestinian woman. The other Bible said a Canaanite woman. She's from Canaan. She saw Jesus Christ walking, and she ran unto him. She's a good master. Heal my daughter. She has shaitan. She is possessed with the demon. Please heal her. You know what Jesus did? He make like this. <laughs> and then she came over here. She said, oh thou son of David, please heal my daughter. You know what Jesus did? He turned his face. The third time, she came to the front. She said, oh thou son of David, have mercy. Heal my daughter, for she is possessed with the demon. You know what Jesus did? He woke up. He didn't say a word, and she was crying, asking him to heal her daughter, who has shaitan, is bothering her. Then Peter, Simon, or Shimon, Simon Peter, he said to Jesus, Master, heal her. She's crying. She's making a noise. She's making a scene. Everybody's watching this. Heal her, for she is crying unto us. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus looked at Simon. He said, Simon, it is not good to take the children's bread and give it to a dog like her. Subhanallah. I don't believe that. I don't believe Jesus said that. I know you don't believe that. I don't believe Jesus. He said to the woman, to Peter, it is not good to take the children's bread and give it to a dog. It's in the Bible. Why would he call her a dog? I don't, I don't, it doesn't, I don't believe Jesus said that. But it is in their record. When he said that, her face changed the woman. That Palestinian woman or Canaan woman, an Arab woman, her face changed. And she said, Master, even the dogs will eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. You're not going to give me the bread. I'm going to eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Then Jesus said unto her, Woman, great is thy faith. Let it be done as thou will. You want to eat the, uh, the crumb? Fine. But the bread, that is the life, the injil, the gospel, the good news, it was meant for Israelites. So Jesus never go outside Jerusalem in his life. Never. For three years in his ministry, he never go outside the boundary of Jerusalem when he was in his ministry. When he was young, nine years old to 12, they say he went to Egypt because they're trying to kill him. Fine. When he received the commission, he became a prophet. He never stepped the boundary of Jerusalem. He's within because he knew Rasulullah. He was sent there. The second verse. Jesus said, O oh Jerusalem, I have come to confirm, to support the book that came before me, which is Torah. I've come to confirm the Torah. It is good. It is from Allah. You must do it. Jesus is confirming the Torah. He never say cancel it. He never say I'm coming with a new law. No. The Quran said, Musaddikan lima bayna Torah. Do we find any confirmation in their books? Of course, because Allah said, Kul khatu burhan. Come, let's see. So we have checked the Burhan. We've checked their book and it's confirming exactly what the Quran said, step by step by step. 
He's coming to confirm. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to destroy the law of Moses and the other prophets that came before me. No, I have not come to destroy. I have come to fulfill, to fulfill. And I'm telling you, heaven and earth will pass away, but a dot from the law shall not pass till all is fulfilled. And whosoever do the law of Moses will become great. But whosoever cancel a single law from the book of Moses will become least. He's coming to confirm. Musaddik and lima, Torah. The second proof can be found in the book of Matthew, again, chapter 19, verse 16. A Jewish man was walking in Jerusalem. He saw Jesus Christ, and he said unto him, Good master, what good thing must I do? Tell me, so I will go to heaven. I want to go to eternal life, heaven. Good master, tell me, what good thing must I do to enter life in the heaven eternally? You know what Jesus said? Why do you call me good, my friend? Why does thou call me good for? The only one that is good is the one in heaven. But if you want to enter life, if you want to enter heaven eternally, keep the law and the commandment of Moses. You don't go to heaven, keep the law of the, of the Moses. This is Matthew 19.16. Then the man said, Master, well, what is the law that Jesus said? Worship your Lord with all your heart, with all your mind. Thou shalt not have any God beside him. Thou shalt not covet the property of your neighbor. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not, he expound the Ten Commandments. Then Jesus said, if you do this, salvation is yours. He didn't say, wait, I'm going to die, so my blood is going to cleanse you up. He didn't say that. He was following the law, which is what the Quran said. Musaddik and Lima, when they Torah. The last one. Wa mubashiran bi rasulin ya'ati min badi ismuhu Ahmad. And I'm giving you good news, O Jerusalem. Good news for a, a messenger to come after me. His name shall be Ahmad. Walamma ja'akum bil bayinat. Kalu khazna sikhirun mubin. But he, when he come with a clear-cut evidence, you will say, no, man, we don't believe in him. Nah, that's not true. That's, that's, that's a human nature. I'm giving you a good news of a messenger to come after me. Min bad ismuhu Ahmad. His name shall be Ahmad. But when he comes, you will not believe that. You will say he's a liar. Let's break this down. Did Jesus actually mention the messenger Muhammad as Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa in the book? Or did he say that in the Hebrew language? So we read in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. John 14, 15, Jesus said to the disciple, Beloved, if you love me, keep my commandment. My, not somebody else, not him. If you love me, keep my commandment and I will pray. And the Father, watch this, and the Father will send you another comforter. Another comforter. And he will be with you forever. That comforter will be with you forever. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what did the, our brethren, the Christian, what did they say? No, that's Jesus. The Holy Ghost is coming. He didn't say, he didn't say Ahmad. He said comforter. He said advocate. He said paraclete. He said Holy Ghost. The question is, did Jesus spoke English? Ask them. Did he say comforter with his mouth? Did he say advocate? Did he say paraclete? Did he say Holy Ghost? No, he didn't say because this is English. What did he say for you to translate? He might have said something. That something is what I'm trying to catch. What did he say? The Quran said, he said, Ahmad. We will deal with that in a few seconds. Let me buttress this one. In the book of John, again, chapter 16, verse 7, Jesus said to the disciple and to the Israelite, it is, beloved, it is very important that I have to go. I have to go. If I don't go, the comforter will not come. If I go, he will come. That means this is a conditional clause. If I don't go, he won't come. If I go, he will come. And if he come, he will reprove the world and talk about sin and righteousness. So who is this person that Jesus have to go for him to come? You ask the Christian. They say, well, this is the Holy Ghost. Well, 
in the book of John, in the book of Luke, the Holy Ghost was there. Jesus said, if you go to the preaching of healing and preaching, the Holy Ghost in you will do the work. That means the Holy Ghost was there. He was talking about somebody else. If I don't go, he won't come. Another comforter. If I say, I will give you another Quran. That means I gave you a Quran before. So here, another comforter will be the same like Jesus. Who was the first comforter? Jesus. Prophets and messengers, they are here to comfort you and I. They are a go between Allah and us. They receive revelation. They clarify Allah's word and we listen. They are comforters. They comfort us. But Jesus said, this particular person will come after I leave. John 16, 12. Listen again to what Jesus said. He said, beloved, I have many, many, many things to tell you, O Israel. But you cannot understand it now. However, watch my finger. When he, the spirit of truth comes, he didn't come yet. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. Whatever he speaks, so shall he be told. And he will declare unto you all things that are to come. And he will glorify me. Eight masculine gender in one verse. There is not a single verse in the whole Bible with eight masculine positive gender. He, 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 himself. You ask them, who is that? They say, well, that's, that's, that's the Holy Ghost. I say, well, the Holy Ghost is supposed to be God. Who is going to send another God? Is God sending another Holy Ghost? Who is a God? What are you talking about? So the whole trend is not making sense. But in that verse, he said, whatever he speaks, so shall he be told. Muhammad doesn't speak on his own. Whatever he says, that's exactly what Allah has asked him to say. Then the, in the book of John 16, 12, it also said, he will guide you into all truth. When he come, he will guide you into all truth. Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you can understand. See, in the evolution of religion, the people at that time, they cannot understand the whole information. Like my son, like this, my young little daughter who was taken out here, and this, my, young, my son over here, or my grandson rather, you know, uh, I have a lot of information that I'm going to give him right now. A lot. But he can't understand it now. So in the evolution of religion, Jesus said to them, I have many things to tell you, O Israel, but you can't understand it now. However, when he comes... He will guide you because whatever he speaks, so shall he be told. If this is the Holy Ghost, how can the Holy Ghost supposed to be God? So who is going to tell Holy Ghost something to tell somebody? It's got to be somebody else. And in that verse, it says, when he comes, he will glorify me. Jesus said, when he comes, he will glorify me. What is the glorification that the messenger Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, gave to Jesus? Number one. My wife's name, for example, is Mary. To glorify the mother of Jesus, to commemorate the mother of Jesus. My uncle's name is Isa. To glorify the name of Jesus. Surah Al-Ma'idah, in the Quran, there is a place where the food came from heaven. They eat the Sahaba and the Jesus. Traditionally, it is meant for Jesus Christ and the Sahaba. Surah Ali Imran is for the family of Jesus. Glorify. When he come, he will glorify me. Surah Al-Maryam. Oh, that is one of my best surah. It clinched the deal. I'm yet to see a single surah or chapter in the Bible, any Bible, meant for Mary. You calling me the enemy? When in my Quran, I have a surah where Allah says, Inna Allah khastafaki wa taharaki wa staffaki ala nisaili alameen. Subhanallah. He didn't, Muhammad didn't say my mother, my wife, my daughter, my, my, no, not even the Arabian beautiful women. Not them, a Jewess. His opposition, who were looking down upon him for millennium. She is the best of women. Subhanallah. In huwa illa wa hayun yuha. It's got to be a revelation. Why would he promote a Jewess? Those who were looking down upon the Messenger Muhammad and the Arabs as a whole, they are looking down upon them. Yet Muhammad is glorifying them. It's got to be a revelation. When he comes, he will glorify me. So we know the first miracle 
by Jesus in the Bible, it's in the book of John, chapter 2, verse 1. He turned water into wine. Hammer. The first miracle, Mojiza. What happened? Jesus went to a marriage feast. They invite him for a birthday, you know. So he went with the Sahaba, with his uh, companion. When they went, they would begin to drink. People were drinking, and then the wine is finished. The Bible said that. The wine is finished. When the wine finished, the mayor, the governor, the CEO, the big men started coming in. But when they, there's no wine. So Mary, the mother of Jesus, oh my God, there's no wine. Big men are coming. So she went to Jesus. She know he has some powers. So she spoke to him in private. He said, look, my son, uh, we don't have no more wine. The wine is finished, Sheikh. The wine is finished. And big men are coming in. So what do we do? You know what Jesus did? I don't believe that also. He said, woman, what have I to do with thee? My time is not your time, subhanAllah. How would you speak to your mother like this? She came in private. You calling her woman? In the Hebrew language, what is the word for mother? Um. Same in Arabic. Hebrew Arabic sister language. They say shalom, we say salam. They say navim, we say nabi. They say rushul, we say rasul. They say kutub, we say kitab. They say gehenna, we say jahannam. They say uh, rushul, we say rasul. They say ilah, Allah, ilaha, Elohim, we say Allah. Hebrew language, especially the Aramaic language of Jesus, and Arabic is so very, very close. But Jesus is calling his mother woman in public. He made a guest. Woman, what have I to do with thee? What? And he was calling Mary Magdalene, a woman who was prostitute. They say she's, I didn't see. The Bible says she was prostitute. He said, woman, where are thine accusers? And you're calling the same word to your mother. We don't believe that. I don't believe that. Personally, I don't believe that. No Muslim in his right state of mind will believe Jesus called his mother. To the end of the verse, woman, my mother, the messenger said, your mother, your mother, your mother. Finish that before he said, your father. Ah, he said, entering Jannah is under the feet of your mother. Yet, he calling her, uh, what? He called her what? Woman. So, when, so she, she shabbily, in a shy way, she went and sat down. Later, he realized that he, he's done wrong. He said, okay, bring the bowl and put water in it. They brought a big bowl. They put water in it. He said, cover the water. They cover it. And he stood for a few minutes. He said, now draw it. Take off the lid. When they took it off, it became wine. People started drinking. So the leader of the occasion, the best man of the occasion, the leader, when he drank the wine, he said, ah, why did you keep the last wine for the, uh, the best wine for the, I mean, to the last. In other words, he enjoyed the potency. He had some buzz in it. He catch the air. He catch the Wi-Fi, they say. Well, I don't know, you get the Wi-Fi. He, he drank it, and he got the Wi-Fi. Internet was running. He said, why did you keep the best to the last? Ah, oh, wine. And the messenger said, curse is he who planted a seed for the purpose of making a wine. Curse is he who harvests it. Curse is he who bottles it. Curse is he who buy it. Curse is he who drinks it. Curse in Islam. There is not a single way, nor any way. Reach to me, Amal is Shaitan. Today, look at what wine is doing. So that is the first miracle of Jesus. He turned water into wine. The first miracle. In Quran or in Islam, he defended his mother from the enemies by speaking when he was in the cradle. Subhanallah. Which one would you choose? The one that turned water into wine or the one that spoke as an infant to defend the sanctity, the dignity of his mother. A mother who carried him for nine months. And because of you, Jesus, they were calling her names. They were calling her names. So subhanAllah, this is what Jesus said. When he come, he will glorify me. So Muhammad came and glorified Jesus Christ. Muhammad came and glorified Jesus Christ. But behold, the Christian will say, but the, Jesus said when, when, when he come, he will be with us forever. Muhammad is not here forever. They tell me all the time. John 14, 15. He said, the father will send you another comforter and he will be with you forever. 
They say, okay, Mr. Muhammad, I will. Uh, but Jesus, uh, Muhammad is not here with us. What do you mean? The Bible says he'll be here for, forever. What it means is that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, in the book of Luke, Father Ibrahim, or Abraham, him and Lazarus, they were in heaven. Then they saw people are being punished in hell. So Lazarus said, Father Ibrahim, allow me to go back to dunya and inform my people to change their ways. Otherwise, they will burn in hell. Then Abraham said, no, we don't have to go. Because they have Moses and the other prophets with them. Let them listen to them. But Moses was not there. The other prophets were not there. What he meant was that they have the law of Moses with them. Let them listen to them. The same thing, Hatim al Nabi'in wa Imam al Mursaleen. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the last messenger. No book will come. This is it. The book has been given. Allah said, Walaka sarafna fi haza al Qur'an al nasi min kulli masalin. Kulli shayin fasanna ku tafsila. To each and everything, Allah said, tafsila. This day, I have perfected your religion and complete my favor upon you. Perfected. Perfected. This barrel is full with water. If I put another water, I'm just wasting time. I'm wasting water, right, Sheikh? I'm wasting water. It's perfected. There's no need to add perfected. Perfected. This day, Allah said, I have perfected your religion. Complete my favor. Complete. Full. So this is what Jesus is saying. When he come, he will guide you into all truth. All truth. And that is exactly what the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to do. Following the law and the commandment of Moses. So we read in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. Moses, alayhi salam, he make mention about the messenger Muhammad. Sometimes prophecy does not come with the name. Prophecy, according to Webster's Dictionary, a prophecy is a word picture of an event. When that event comes to pass, then we see the fulfillment of the situation. Let's say my name is Muhammad Awal. Today is Tuesday. Let's say tomorrow is Wednesday. Or somebody will say, oh, yesterday... Um, uh, the praise one, the first, came here and he gave a lecture. Would you know that I came and gave a lecture? No. Thank you. No, because you translate my name, which you don't have the right to do. Oh, who came yesterday, last Tuesday? Oh, the praise one, the first, he came and gave a lecture. The praise one, the first, who came? I don't know. But that is me. So sometimes prophecy comes with words. You just have to piece this together. For example, let's look at the book, The Songs of Solomon 516. Solomon 516. I'm going to read that in English. Tell me if you see Muhammad inside, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It says, his skin is like that of the Lebanese. His mouth is beautiful. He is altogether lovely. He is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. You don't see Muhammad there. Because everything translated. And Solomon did not speak English. And we don't have the Hebrew Bible. What an irony. What did he say? So if you go back to the Hebrew itself, we manage whatever they have, we manage to understand what it says in Hebrew language. What did Solomon actually say? Solomon said, Hiko, hiko, mamitatim, fi kullu zahudin, muhammadim, vazamarai, bayna yahushalam. Muhammad im vazamurai bayna yahushalam. Muhammad im, you know what the pastor told me? What's the Muhammad hour? It says Muhammad im, he didn't say Muhammad. <laughs> you know how they do that thing. So now I have to explain. He say Muhammad im, but Muhammad's name is Muhammad. You don't say Muhammad im, that's not Muhammad. No, 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 no. They got it wrong. The thing is, the word im, I am, is a suffix in the Hebrew language. It is a word of respect. In the book of Genesis, Abraham, his name was Abram. God said, Abram, I have taken thee as a friend. Thy name shall not be Abram, but Abraham, or Abraham, or Ibrahim. That im, or am, is a suffix of respect in the Hebrew language. So, Ibrahim. 
Abraham. His name is Abraham, but they put him with all due respect, with all majesty, that glorification. The same thing applies to Elah, Eloh, Alaha. In Hebrew, it means Allah or Elah, but they add Elohim. The Jewish don't use the word Elohim. It is so like Tabarak Asma Rabbuka Zal Jalal Wal Ikram. It's a powerful name. Elohim. The im is added. The same thing with Muhammad. Solomon was talking about Muhammad. He said Muhammad im with all due respect. That im was added. Is there? We know, Sheikh, the first revelation was Ikra, right? Suratul Alaqa. Everybody knows that. Quran chapter, chapter 96. When Muhammad was in the cave, Salam, the angel said, Ikra. He said, Ma ana I am not learned. Ikra. He said, I am not learned. He never go to school. If he has gone to school, or maybe he finished Ummul Qura, or Kulliyatullah, uh, whatever, whatever, or maybe <laughs> he went to Al Azhar, maybe they, they will have doubt. But the Quran confirmed. Muhammad was not in the habit of writing with his own hand. And he never learned from any way. Had it been his, then all these things, you would have doubted his origin of the book. So when the angel said, Ikra, he said, Ma'ana Bikari, Ikra, Ma'ana Bikari, Ikra, Ma'ana Bikari. The third time, the angel embraced him and let him go. So Muhammad, he realized in the lexical Arabic connotation, the word Ikra, it means to read, to recite, to say, to repeat. So the angel said, Ikra, Muhammad said, Ikra. This is Rabbi Whatever the angel said, Muhammad, he repeated, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, word for word. This quotation, Sheikh, it is in their book. It's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 12. Isaiah 29, verse 12, it reads, and I'm quote, it's in the Bible. And the book was given to him who is not learned. And they asked him to read. And he said, I cannot read. I said, who is this? The Bible said, the book was given to him who is not learned. And he said, I cannot read. The only prophet we know, when the word of Allah came to him, he said, Ma I cannot read. It's confirmed. That's what Allah said. Allazina yatabi'una rasul al-nabiyya al Allazi yajidu nahu maktuban in the humfit Torah wal Injil. Those who follow the messenger, watch, the unlettered prophet, the unlettered prophet whom they found mentioned in their books, Torah wal Injil. That means his name is mentioned in there. Isaiah continued about the book to read. And Isaiah continued by saying, We will give him the book, but hear a little. There a little, here a little, there a little, line upon line. But he will speak with a different language, meaning he will not speak Hebrew, but a different language, which is Arabic language. The Quran came as such, bit by bit. Surah Alaka, Quran 96, from Ikra up to Malami Alam, the angel stopped. That surah contained 19 Verses. Allah gave five verses, then the angel left. The second time the angel came, he should continue, but he didn't continue. Quran 74, he gave 11. He didn't finish. The third time the Quran came, Quran 65, here a little, there a little. Line upon line. He will speak with a different language. That means he will speak Arabic language, not Hebrew, because Allah was speaking to Isaiah, that he will, when he comes, he will speak with a different language. In the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 9, it's in the Bible. It says, Allah was speaking to Prophet Zephaniah. Oh, Zephaniah, towards the end of time, I, God Almighty, I will change the language of the nations all over the world to one single pure language. And they will stand shoulder to shoulder, worshiping me from Ethiopia all the way to Egypt and to the Euphrates. What, what, which religion stands shoulder to shoulder? The Imam always telling us, please shoulder to shoulder, make your shoulder, put, you know, <laughs> be, be, be on the rank. The Bible said, I, God, I will change the language of all the nation to one single pure language, and they will stand shoulder to shoulder. This is Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. This is information that is in the book. 
It's unbelievable. But all, you know, sometimes I don't understand. The reason why they don't see all this thing is that they're reading the Bible in English language. They don't have that luxury of reading in the Hebrew language. How did Jesus, Moses, I, they, it's English, so everything is translated. And that's why they don't see. That's why they don't see. So I'll give you an example again. Do I have time? Check, I have time. Oh, mashallah. So we have time, mashallah. Um, maybe I'll take, I'm going to, let me put this one in and then open for questions. I don't know. All right. So let me just throw one more and then I'm going to go for question and answer. Okay, who knows this word? I'm going to throw it in. Uh, you know, they say, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? <laughs> no one goes to the Father but through me. This is what they clinch their deal with it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Uh, we are in trouble because Jesus is the way. He's the truth, and he's the life. And we can never go to heaven unless we follow Jesus. That's what the Bible said. So I was doing a program in Texas, University of Texas. So they asked me, Mr. Muhammad Awal. I said, yes, sir. Do you believe Jesus is the way? I said, of course I believe. You do? I said, yes. Do you believe he's the truth? I said, of course he's the truth. And then they were like, what? You believe that? <laughs> and you believe he's the life? I said, of course. They said, ah. This is the first time we see a Muslim believing in John chapter 14, verse 6. You believe no one goes to the Father except through him? I said, of course, I believe. No problem. In return, I have a question. It's always having a question somewhere around the corner. The question is, at the time of Moses, who was the way, the truth, and the life? Moses. You have to follow Moses, otherwise you're in trouble. At the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was the way because his way leads to Allah. He was the truth as he received from Allah. And if you don't listen to him, you worship your idols, no way. So at the time of Jesus, he was the way, yes, the truth, yes, the life giver. The life giver, it means in the interpretation, it means you, you, you live in heaven eternally, eternal life. And no one at the time of Jesus who refused him, will go to heaven because he was the messenger, the prophet at that time. But the Quran said, Kul in kuntu Allah, Allah, wa lakum The same thing. If you believe in Allah, follow him. So we follow him. Jesus is the way. Yes, at the time that he existed, he was the way, the truth, and the life. No question asked. All the prophets, they were the way, the truth, and the life. And no one go to the Father except he worship them, except he believe in them. Now they mention about miracle. So let me just show you quickly, man. I don't know when I'm going to come back here. I just want to give as much as I can. Uh, so Jesus Christ, he walked on water. Yeah, he is God. He, 5,000 people with five fish shake. 5,000 people with five fish and three bread. He feed 5,000 people. Another time, 2,000 people with three bread and five fish. He feed them all. And even some of the food remain. Wow, how did he do that? He walked on water. Wow. The blind man, Batima. Blind, he touched him. He sees sight. The paralysis. Jesus did a miracle. SubhanAllah. They say, Musa Muhammad. Muhammad didn't do a miracle. You see, Jesus is a miracle. Only God can do that. Who can do this? I say, oh, yeah. You have time for me to give you more than three billion different miracles of Muhammad. Do you have time for that? You combine the whole miracle of all the prophets. Never come closer to what the Rasul did. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the Quran is not all about miracle, miracle, miracle. But since you mentioned about miracle, let's go to the book of John, chapter 11. The book of John 11, it speaks about Lazarus. You know, Lazarus, poor Lazarus, very poor, very, you know, hungry. He's like downtrodden. And Jesus loved people like that. So Jesus went to the village where Lazarus lived, and he went straight to the house of Lazarus. Oh, my friend, they embraced, like, you know, like the Arabs. I'm, I'm used to it now. You know, yeah, it's sweet, man. It's like a rhythm, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it kind of work out. Yeah, check. <laughs> so he did that with Lazarus, and they sat down, and they broke the bread. They eat. When they finish, Jesus said to the disciples, let's go to the Jericho. Let's go to Jericho and do da'wah. Let's go and preach the gospel. So they left. As they left the village where Lazarus was, 
Four days after they left the village, Lazarus got sick and he died. After four days, Jesus said, let's go back to the village and see about our brethren. When Martha, the sister of Lazarus, she heard that the master is coming back to the village. So she ran to the gate of the city and she saw Jesus Christ coming and she bowed down. She said, oh, thou master, if you are here, your friend Lazarus would not have died. Then Jesus said, no, Lazarus, no matter. He did not die. He will rise up. Then Martha said, yes, master, I know he will rise up in the day of judgment. Jesus said, no, no, Martha, even now, if you have faith, you will see the glory of God. Where did you bury him? Show me his grave. Where did you bury him? She said, it's in the sepulcher. A sepulcher is an ancient form of burial for the Jewish. It's a rock that they hewn. They hewn through the rock and they put you in. Not me, not you, not me. They put them in. And they put a huge rock at the entrance of the rock. That is a sepulcher. So she said, he's buried in the sepulcher. Jesus said, let's go to the sepulcher. The people who were standing, they said, what is he going to do? Lazarus is dead for four days. Maybe the, you know, the morphine and, and uh, the body decomposition have set in. Maybe, you know, so what is he going to do? They were talking. Jesus Christ, he was listening. He didn't say a word. On the way going, Jesus began to communicate with Allah. The Bible said, and Jesus groaned in the spirit. And Jesus wept, crying. Oh, my father, give me the power. I have to bring him back. These people, they must believe in me. Oh, my father. And Jesus groaned in the spirit. The shortest sentence in the Bible. And Jesus wept. When he get the assurance, he looked at the grave. He said, this is the grave? They say, yes. He said, remove the stone from the entrance of the grave. They move away the stone. When they move the stone, Jesus stretched his hand like this. And he said, Salisa Komuni Lazarus. Get up, Lazarus. And Lazarus came back to death. He came back to life. Four days he was dead, buried. Jesus brought him back to life. Jesus said, put him on the seat. They sit him down. And Jesus said, remove the bandage. They took off the bandage. Then people begin to say, he is God. Now we know he is God. Ah, how can this man die for four days? And he's going to bring him back to life? He must be God. They were saying it. Jesus Christ was listening. He didn't say anything. When Lazarus' clothes was taken, the bandage it was taken, listen to what Jesus said and tell me if he, if he is the one who did it. He looked to the heaven. Jesus said, oh, my father, I know that you hear me. Now he's coming to thank Allah. He said, oh, my father, I know that thou hearest me. And I know that thou hearest me always, always. I walk on water, it's you. I feed them, it's you. The blind man, it's you. The paralysis is you. I know that thou hearest me. And I know that thou hearest me always. But I'm saying this loudly so that these people may know that thou are doing the works. Which miracle? He didn't do any miracle. The miracle he did is for his fame. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. No, I need some questions. So definitely my time is up. I'm going to stop here. The way you're looking at me, you want me to keep going. Man, I'm going to be speaking till that kingdom come. You know me. So I'm going to put a stop here, right? <laughs> and so if there's any question that you might want me to explain what I've said, so inshallah. Ask three questions. Uh, I just heard from the Muslims over again, so you can be humble because it's a successful view. Right. For one reason, mm. you mentioned four tribes in her session. Right. It's not a matter of tribes in her session. It's mm. a matter of the people, the same people. Mm. Like the king died, he come before the king right. for the same people, for the same country. Right. Sayyidina Muhammad did not come to the same people that Jesus came to. Mm. He came to the whole world. The whole world. That's why we cannot say he's the successor of Jesus. Second question, you said, They don't know the deen. They don't know it's the mutlaq. Mutlaq, not only the deen. They don't know everything because Allah knows everything. And the human being does know nothing in comparison. It has nothing to do with the deen. It's in general. Mm. Thank you. Okay, can I explain that? Okay, thank you very much. That's a very beautiful question, by the way. <laughs> what I'm trying to say when I say Muhammad is the natural successor to Jesus Christ. We have so many hadiths also where the messenger said, in the day of Qiyamah, I will rise up myself in Jesus Christ because he was the one that left before I came. So the succession, 
I'm not saying like election succession. You know, it's a general idea that you have to understand that after Jesus, Muhammad came nobody else. And Jesus Christ gave information about Muhammad. All the prophets gave information about Muhammad. Jesus Christ gave information. So he gave information about Muhammad. When Muhammad came, he succeeded Jesus Christ. Not physical succession, like we go to a, a party. No, 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 no. That's what I mean. For general idea, you understand exactly what I mean. That is number one. Number two. Muhammad came for the whole of mankind. So when I say, Look at the language, even though it's your language. For the whole of mankind. Bashiran wa naziran. Giving them warning, who? Mankind. And guiding them. Then Allah said, Most of mankind do not know this religion. And it's true. Islam is the fastest growing religion. But today, if you take your sajad, you go outside, you spread. Allah Akbar. Say, what, what is he doing? They might bring their camera. To, oh, that's, that's, that's odd. But the messenger said that. al Islam started strange. They don't know Islam. They don't know. Muhammad came. They don't know this Islam. What is he doing in Mecca? Strange. Then Allah, the messenger said, this strangeness will come back to be strange again. Just like before. So now Islam is strange. Then Allah, the, the messenger said, give good news to the strangers. We are the strangers. So Islam is the most strangest religion. It is. They know the name Islam, Muhammad, but they don't know. Jesus, they don't know. That is why you and I should do dawa. Kuntu hayru ummat ukhur jallin nas. Ta'amuruna bil. They don't know this religion. There is a work for us to do. And inshallah, we will continue to do that until Allah make it easy for us, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah, brother. Right. I got you. The brother was asking a very nice question. What is the connection between Jesus Christ and Isa alayhi salam in conjunction with the temple of Solomon? You know, when Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he came, I'm going to start, I'm going to come down with it. When Ibrahim alayhi salam came, Ibrahim, uh, temple or the place of worship is very, very important in the community. The messenger established the Masjid al-Nabawi, the first thing he did, temple, place of worship, not a temple, it's a masjid, but this is what they call so it's very important. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he came, he destroyed all the idols in that temple to, to, to show us that the place of worship is supposed to be one God worship, not idols. So when Isa ibn Maryam came, in the book of Luke and in the book of Matthew, he went to the temple of Solomon. And he, like the table, he threw the table away. People are making business. They worshiping other gods. You know, they were changing money and selling and making. So he upset it. To cleanse the temple. It's a symbolic cleansing. <laughs> Symbolically, he was cleaning the temple. It was meant to be worshipped. When the messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, the same thing, was a haq al-batil. He was tumbling the idols, just like uh, Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam did, just like Jesus did, and Muhammad did that. Because temple, or place of worship, or, or, or masjid, they play a major role in the life of uh, the believers. That's what the messenger established. First thing he did, establish. In the masjid, they do everything. Business, uh, where they're going, uh, you know, for gazwa, war, they talk about that. Marriage, everything. Masjid to the center. That's why Jesus Christ cleansed it. So that connection is there with Solomon. And he said, this is the house, the, this is the house of prayers to my father, not the house of thieves, the den of thieves. And he cleans it. So that is symbolic cleansing. So there is that connection between uh, yeah, Solomon and Jesus Christ. May Allah have mercy. <laughs> Take last question. If there's no question, that means all of you are baptized, right? <laughs> all right, I'll take it. No problem.
Okay. Okay. My brother is asking. My brother is asking. Okay, I'm going to repeat the question. My brother is asking a very innocent question. <clears throat> innocent question. He said the way I'm speaking uh, in the Quran and then I'm bringing the Bible, it's like I'm trying to normalize the Bible and say that it is okay. The Quran said, "Wa anzalna alayka al-kitab bil haq." We send down the book to you, O Muhammad, in truth, to confirm the other books that came before the Quran. Then the Quran is The Quran is a balance, it's a judge between in you know between the books. So we believe in the Bible, there is the word of God. In the Bible, it's the word of the prophet. In the Bible, there's the word of historian. In the Bible, there's the word of uh, ancestors, is the, the stories, everything mixed together. We have to save it. So the Quran said, Yes, they with Islam. There is a lot of verse which is very, 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 it goes with Islam. So beautiful. But most of it, many, is compromised. They write, they change, they keep on revision, volume one, volume two, revised standard version. But I'm, I'm not promoting the Bible. No, 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 no. I'm promoting the Quran. <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> Thumbs up. So may Allah make it easy for you and me. So, ayakumullah. <laughs> Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استووا اعتدلوا اقبلوا على الله بقلوب خاشعة صلوا صلاة مودع الله أكبر
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أجعلتم سقاية الحاج وعمارة المسجد الحرام كمن آمن بالله واليوم الآخر كمن آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وجاهد في سبيل الله لا يستوون عند الله والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين الذين آمنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله بأموالهم وأنفسهم أعظم درجة أعظم درجة عند الله وأولئك هم الفائزون يبشرهم ربهم برحمة منه ورضوان وجنات لهم فيها نعيم مقيم خالدين فيها أبدا إن الله عنده أجر عظيم يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تتخذوا اباءكم واخوانكم اولياء ان استحبوا ان استحبوا الكفر على الايمان ومن يتولهم منكم فاولئك هم الظالمون قل ان كان اباؤكم وابناؤكم واخوانكم وازواجكم وعشيرتكم وعشيرتكم واموال اقترفتموها وتجاره وتجاره تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها احب اليكم أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين لقد نصركم الله في مواطن كثيرة ويوم حنين إذ أعجبتكم كثرتكم فلم تغن عنكم شيئا وضاقت عليكم الأرض بما رحبت ثم وليتم مدبرين ثم أنزل الله سكينته على رسوله وعلى المؤمنين وأنزل جنودا لم تروها وعذب الذين كفروا وذلك جزاء الكافرين ثم يتوب الله من بعد ذلك على من يشاء والله غفور رحيم الله اكبر سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي سبحان ربي سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين 
إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا إنما المشركون نجس فلا يقربوا المسجد الحرام بعد عامهم هذا وإن خفتم عيلة فسوف يغنيكم الله من فضله إن شاء إن الله عليم حكيم قاتلوا الذين لا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الآخر ولا يحرمون ما حرم الله ورسوله ولا يدينون ولا يدينون دين الحق من الذين اوتوا الكتاب حتى يعطوا الجزيه حتى يعطوا الجزيه عن يد وهم صاغرون وقالت اليهود عزير بن الله وقالت النصارى المسيح ابن الله ذلك قولهم بأفواههم يضاهئون قول الذين كفروا من قبل قاتلهم الله أنا يؤفكون اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا أربابا من دون الله والمسيح ابن مريم وما امروا الا ليعبدوا الها واحدا لا اله الا هو سبحانه عما يشركون يريدون ان يطفئوا نور الله بافواههم ويابى الله ويابى الله الا ان يتم نوره ولو كره الكافرون هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي سمع الله لمن حمده طيبا الله اكبر سبحان ربي الاعلى سبحان ربي الله اكبر الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الله أكبر التحية لله والصلاة الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين مستقيم صراط الذين غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله اكبر سبحان ربي الاعلى سبحان ربي الاعلى الله اكبر 
الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم إياك نستعين ونستعين 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 غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الله أكبر ولا إله إلا الله الصمد الشهيد وحده لا شريك له عبده ورسوله محمد على عبده ورسوله إلى الله الوحيد إلى الله الوحيد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يعني first of all we thank our brother Sheikh Muhammad Awal for his uh, lecture. May Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala reward him for all of the steps to come here to share with us this knowledge. May Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala reward him and give us the benefits of that, inshallah. And inshallah, if he came here to visit America again, inshallah, more than welcome to see you here, inshallah. Abdullah Ali Fadda. Assalamu alaikum, Abdullah Ali, uh, Dawa chairperson here behalf of ICH, we'd like to thank the brother Zakir for coming and sharing the knowledge with us and those behind the scene, uh, Brother Sadiq, and I uh, forgot the brother's name. What's your brother's name? Talib? Nada. Not Nada. <laughs> I know Nada. The brother right here. The brother, uh, your ex-roommate, is he here? Anyway, we just thank you for <laughs> bringing him here. Um, like he said, uh, he's using the, the Bible to make reference to the Quran, not to emphasize that the Bible is correct. Um, when I go out to do dawah, you use their book to, to confirm what we have in the Quran to prove a point, you know. And uh, it's good to know those things because um, you speak, you, you look in their book and say, this is what their book says, this is what our book says, it's the same. So why are you not believing us, you know? So he's just making a comparison so we can go out and, and spread the word of Allah, of Allah through the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu correctly, you know. And um, those events that I have, that we have here, like Open Mosque Day and In the Faith Day, you don't have to go out and do dawah. Those little things about like inviting your neighbor, that will help spread the word of the day. You don't have to be knowledgeable you can give money, you can give books, you can invite people in, have us talk to them that's on the Dawah Committee. You know, you don't have to 
when I say you can help us do dawa, you don't have to be uh, front line. You can do a lot of things. So when I ask you to invite a neighbor, that is, goes a long way of spreading the deen to the world. Jazakallah.